Well, it's Sunday, just going out to Woolies to get some uh, provisions. Uh, definitely need my soda water, my uh, uh, tonic water, I should say, for my GNTs. I like that drink, it really goes down well. Now I've got the frozen lemon slices, I put them in as well, so it's totally authentic now. So it's quite nice. Getting a bit of spitting here, actually. It's a, it's a bit of cloud out there, and it's just it's hard to pick when it rains around here, but it's just it's just been spitting a bit. It's been quite overcast like last couple of days. I finally got round to uh, to watching the uh, the movie that was recommended to me, which was Green Book, and uh, it was set in 1962, and it was actually. Uh, directed by uh, Peter Farrelly, who's one of the Farrelly brothers who we're a big fan of. They were the people who brought us uh, There's Something About Mary. Uh, Peter Farrelly doesn't seem to be working as much with his brother Bobby as he used to, although they still do collaborate, so I guess it's not bad blood, just a lifestyle decision. So they, But the Green Book was uh, you know, very good. I thought, considering it was about a... Uh, uh, an Italian guy, a guy from Italy, uh, for, uh, the Italian part of New York, I should say, Bronx or whatever, I'm not sure exactly where he's from, but he's from one of those areas in New York, and uh, his Italian heritage, and he was, he needed a job, he was uh, laid off because he's a bit of a brawler, and he got, uh, it was a Cop Copacabana, I think, it was a famous uh, nightclub he's working at anyway, and they had to shut down for a couple of months. He's looking for a gig. He needed work because he's got a family and whatever, number of kids, wife, the usual thing. And he becomes a chauffeur for a, a prominent black pianist who for some reason has decided to, to tour the, uh, the deep south of the US at 1962. So that was fun and games, obviously. So I thought it was going to be pretty preachy about you know, racism and what have you, but a large degree of the uh, the clash of those two characters, the driver, the Italian driver, and the uh, the black guy, is that they is also very much a class distinction. It wasn't so much the race that was obviously part of the mix, but I was it wasn't preachy. I thought it'd be really preachy about that subject, but it wasn't. It was actually really good character study, and it's actually based on real events. It's a very very good film and. Uh, my uh, my friend in Brisbane recommended it, and uh, so did my cousin, and they were spot on. I should have trusted their opinions. They're pretty uh, sensible people, and uh, and I just I'm just a a bit of a stick in the mud at times. It takes a while to get me moving, but I'm, thank God I actually took their advice and watched the movie. So that was really really compelling. I'd say totally recommend it. So. Yeah, I've been uh, watched some very good uh, entertainment of recent times. I've been very lucky. Uh, I also was uh, just thinking, you know, with the, the situation with um, with China, how that's deteriorated so much. Uh, I was also thinking about the possibility of a of some sort of military flare-up. Is more likely in the disputed region north of India between India and China. And as a matter of fact, that was getting pretty dicey for a while there. Apparently, it's it's cooled down because uh, Xinjiang has actually uh, Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. I'm not sure exactly what. He, but anyway, the, the the guy they got in charge, their version of Daniel Andrews, in my opinion, or on belligerent version of Daniel Andrews. Daniel Andrews is because he's, he's he's in cahoots with us the Chinese Communist Party anyway with the uh, Belt and Road so uh, yeah it's uh, <laughs> but, but 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 what was uh, what was happening with Xi Jinping he had a he had to actually pull out his military um, commander in that region because things were getting very fraught between the Indians and the Chinese and the Indians are no pushover these days if they've, uh, they've got a good military so I guess they realised they might have bitten off more than they could chew. So a bit of, uh, it was good to see them pull back. I think they're going to have to pull back diplomatically too. Oh, that was interesting. I was had, had a chat to uh, an Indian guy, a young Indian guy on a push bike uh, while I was waiting for the lights to change. So good timing considering I was talking about the uh, 
uh, the tensions in the north of India. Uh, but I'm actually uh, I'm watching this site that's actually dedicated to uh, news regarding India, and they've been very happy with the way Australia's responded to uh, to China's belligerence. And, and sort of Scott Morrison actually had a teleconference uh, with the uh, the Indian leader, and uh, so. He, that's a that's a great move. It looks as though, if nothing else, it's going to put pressure on China, and they they're going to start worrying about the uh, how much they can take us for granted, and and the, that's the worst thing you could have in a trade relationship, especially with bullies like China, uh, the Chinese Communist Party specifically. They've got to be put back in their place, and I think the best thing to do is what Scott Morrison is doing is. is it's strengthening ties with India, who are very happy to take advantage of this uh, fraught relationship we have now with uh, the the Chinese regime. So I think it's 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 good all round. He's he's actually he's actually doing a very good job as a statesman. So uh, uh, we really need. I mean, can you imagine if we, what it, what it'd be like if we still had Turnbull. Oh my God. I'd, I would hate to think. I still, like I say, the thing's real sticking point for me is that the Liberals have got to ditch that submarine contract. That is absolutely shocking. And they also need to ditch the other Turnbull Turkey. I mean, there's a lot of them, but that's those, these are the two big ones. Is the Snowy 0.20 thing. That's turned out to be a real cost blowout and it's just a ridiculous scheme. So, uh, the other thing I was actually saw uh, today too, there's actually a uh, site online called, en I think it's Engineering Today, and uh, they were talking about the cost of nuclear power compared to gas, and apparently nuclear can work out to be better in the long term, but investors want to return quickly, and gas is a lot cheaper to build initially, and a hell of a lot uh, faster to, to commission, so to get online and uh, to pay, and you don't need nearly as much money uh, with if you want to set up a, a, um, a nuclear power station you're going to need multiple billions of dollars say about five billion for a one giga I think it was sort of I don't know what the size was it was a thousand I think it might have been a thousand uh, megawatts of power something like that uh, so they, they did a comparison between two two reactors one gas and one uh, nuclear and uh, the nuclear one only comes into its own after about 18 years of operation. It starts becoming cheaper because the fuel is cheaper. However, at the moment, the Americans are looking into developing a uh, like a, a production line of nuclear units that can be um, that can be sort of custom made for uh, well, they can be not custom made. Actually, the opposite. They're actually manufactured to be like mass produced at a lower cost and but they can be configured in different ways or different situations so you can have smaller units and multiply the number of these smaller units to get the required amount of output of power and they think this will be a lot cheaper way of doing it standardizing uh, reactor designs because apparently virtually every nuclear reactor is a unique design these days and that costs a lot more money to do plus of course the green tape it's, I think that's been set up deliberately to put uh, nuclear power out of the equation cost-wise. I think that's a political decision in a lot of cases. So uh, obviously safety is, is first, but the new type of reactors are a lot safer than the older ones. You know, we've got to remember that. We've got to compare what's actually currently happening. Not not talk about old reactors like Fukushima or Chernobyl. They're they're old designs, and. Uh, but of course, because nuclear requires a lot of time to get a return on your investment, I guess a lot of utilities are loath to, to actually switch off their nuclear power station. Although in the States, they have done that. They've actually, uh, they had one station up for renewal and the Pacific Gas and Electric decided to, uh, to not renew it, uh, to refurbish the station and whatever the costs were too great. And they decided to around here noisy bikes choppers or whatever uh, yeah so they're going to recommission the um, uh, they were going to recommission this particular plant but it was too expensive so they decided to just basically scrap it and uh, go gas uh, 
gas has a lot more flexibility too. The uh, you can switch off and on gas plants, uh, whereas it, with nuke you've got to keep them going 24 hours a day. I think it's similar to coal-fired power stations. So peak demand, of course, is when you really need these these plants to be going. And if uh, and if you don't need the power, you're best to turn off the plant so you re you save on maintenance for the the plant and the actual cost of running it obviously so uh, gas does have that advantage as a, as a peak load source of power it is very good and that's the way we're going in australia but of course we shut ourselves in the foot in australia by exporting all our gas this is how stupid this our country has been in the past we didn't put a, a stockpile for domestic use i mean how dumb are our leaders they really are incompetent uh, and again, I'm not blaming Morrison on this one. This is talking about previous regimes and just shows you the stupidity. I, like I said, I really believe we need a huge clean out of the bureaucracy in Canberra because their advice has been crap in a lot of cases. And unfortunately, we've had gutless politicians who just follow their advice, just led by the nose, and they haven't got the balls and the integrity to do their own research. Whereas someone like Mark Lathan does, he does all his research and he, he won't get led by the nose, he'll find out himself. It's not that difficult these days. I mean, I, I discovered this information on this one site. Now, I'd rather get more uh, sources of information than that because there are a lot of sites that are out there who are pushing green agenda so you don't know how much truth there is to what a lot of these places are saying. So you've got to be careful with who the source is, be very selective and uh, not just just believe everything at face value. It's the worst thing you can do. You need to, to really make sure you have reliable sources and a number of them and compare the notes because it's like believing everything is in, in Wikipedia. That's crazy. Wikipedia can be very inaccurate. So you just got to take everything with a grain of salt. And unfortunately, I don't think this is the sort of thing that they're teaching kids at school these days. I wish they would. There's a lot of indoctrination taking place, but what they should be teaching them is critical thinking and how to actually research quality information and come to their own conclusions. But uh, I guess if you're time poor, uh, you just don't have that the, the time to do the, the due diligence. So, uh, and sometimes emotion takes over, especially with a lot of the, uh, the left. They seem to be very emotional. Uh, and uh and oh well especially like in america especially i've heard some some black activists just mouthing off about the uh, the police violence thing which is actually inexcusable what happened to that uh that person that black uh F not floyd what's his uh, george floyd i think was yeah that what happened to him was inexcusable and the cops need to pay for that but uh you know it would be a hard job being a cop but no it, 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 you, that is just not on you don't act the way that guy was crushing that poor guy's neck that is just crap so uh yeah throw the book at those guys but these people protesting you know they've got their problems too in my opinion so it's uh we want to have a calm rational look at this and to improve the police force calls to hack to go to abolish police and it shows how insane this this uh, debate has got that's what they are asking for just to get rid of police altogether so just basically let anarchy rule well that's really worked well in the past hasn't it but of course people these days don't know anything about history they don't get taught history and if they do they're getting taught history that's actually joined us to buy current political correctness so you know this is the problem we have please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if they think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever and uh, either give do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic do both that'd be great uh, but uh, please don't ignore me that's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored